Dr. Luzula, thank you for joining us on this edition of Health Connection. We're going to talk about something that's in the news a lot, metabolic syndrome. Yes. And when we start these off, we almost always like to start with a definition, so let's do that now. What is metabolic syndrome? Well, metabolic syndrome, it's also been called um, syndrome X or dyslipidemic syndrome. It's had a lot of different names in the past, but pretty much everybody is using the term metabolic syndrome now for this really this group of risk factors, um, five different risk factors that they've looked at. One is abdominal obesity or enlarged waistline. The other ones being elevated blood sugar, elevated um, blood pressures, um, high triglycerides, and low HDL or low good cholesterol. Um, and you need at least three of those five risk factors in order to be diagnosed with metabolic syndrome. This syndrome has been shown to increase patients' cardiovascular risk or risk of heart attacks and strokes and other um, problems by two, two to five times the normal population. What are the risk factors for finding yourself in this predicament? How do you get there? Well, the main thing that we think leads to it is obesity um, and being overweight um, in addition to having a inactive lifestyle um, leads to most of these problems, although hereditary and genetics does play a role if you have a family member who has metabolic syndrome or um, diabetes or high blood pressure, then that also puts you at risk for metabolic syndrome. Age, as patients get older, they are also at increased risk of developing metabolic syndrome. Let's add a little color to something you said just a moment ago. Why is having metabolic syndrome so alarming? The alarming thing about it is that the risk um, that it puts the patient at for coronary heart disease as well as stroke, these risk factors seem to increase the risk of blood clots in the arteries around the heart as well as the brain. Are there signs or symptoms to look for? Well, there's, there's not really distinct signs and symptoms of the syndrome itself. Obviously, when somebody's obese, we can measure their waistline, we can measure their weight and determine that fairly easily. However, the other things, high blood sugar, high blood pressure, a lot of times go without any symptoms whatsoever. High blood sugar patients may have increased thirst, may have increased urination, fatigue, those type of symptoms, high blood pressure, again, a lot of times doesn't have any symptoms, although it could be associated with dull headaches, dizziness, blurred vision at times. Um, the other risk factors, the high um, triglycerides and the low um, good cholesterol levels need to be checked with a blood test. And that leads into the question, how do we diagnose metabolic syndrome? Well, metabolic syndrome is usually diagnosed by a physician and it's, again, a combination of risk factors, including um, the increased abdominal obesity. And for women, that's greater than 35 inches. Uh, for men, that's greater than 40 inches to, to be able to determine whether they had that central abdominal obesity. Um, for high triglycerides, it's considered greater than 150 um, on the, the blood work. Um, in good cholesterol, we want it the higher, the better. For women, the number is less than 50 um, would be a risk factor. For men, it would be less than 40 would be a risk factor for them. Elevated blood sugars, any fasting blood sugar greater than 100 would put a patient at risk um, and be a risk factor for metabolic syndrome. And for high blood pressure, the number that they use is actually 130 over 85 would qualify a patient uh, for metabolic syndrome. Once possessed of a diagnosis, how do you treat it? The treatments are mainly lifestyle. The goal of the treatment overall is to decrease the risk for cardiovascular disease, heart attack, and stroke. That's done by decreasing all of these risk factors, and the main treatment is lifestyle modifications, weight loss, increased physical activity, a quote-unquote heart-healthy diet, increasing fruits and vegetables, fiber, whole grains, decreasing the amount of trans fats um, and unhealthy things um, in our diet, trying to, to modify those, those risk factors. If these levels of cholesterol, blood sugar, blood pressure 
are not, if we're not able to get there just with lifestyle alone um, and weight loss attempts and things like that, then we can use medications um, to lower the blood pressure, to lower the blood sugar, um, and to treat high cholesterol or high triglycerides. Children, they at risk for metabolic syndrome? Absolutely. We're seeing metabolic syndrome younger and younger these days. And usually it's right around puberty we start seeing um, the obesity really um, epidemic really come into effect in, in teenagers around puberty and, and when we start looking at their waist circumference and looking at all these risk factors, a lot of them are diagnosed with metabolic syndrome. I lived most of my life and didn't know there was such a thing as metabolic syndrome and I know it, it's actually kind of a new label, but mm -hmm. why is it becoming more common? Well, we think it's becoming more and more common because of the o obesity epidemic. As people are getting larger and larger and gaining more weight, obviously their um, waist circumference increases and that abdominal obesity increases. That puts them at risk for elevated blood sugars. That puts them at risk for elevated blood pressure um, and for the abnormalities in cholesterol that we tend to see. And all of that goes together to increase the risk for cardiovascular disease. You keep coming back to the common theme of weight. Mm -hmm. it, let's say you lose 10% of your body mass. Mm -hmm. What impact will that have? If you're able to lose weight, not only does that improve your numbers, it can improve your blood sugar, it can improve your blood pressure, um, it can also help improve your cholesterols and things like that, and it decreases your risk of cardiovascular disease um, by, by quite a bit if you can just lose 10% of your body weight. So really it can, <clears throat> it, 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 losing 10% of your, of your body weight can be kind of a miracle drug. It can be. If, if that, and a lot of times patients who are started on drugs to treat some of these risk factors, to treat high cholesterol, to treat high blood pressure, to treat high blood sugar, if they're able to change their lifestyle, to lose the weight, then a lot of times we can take off medications. We can eliminate the need for drugs. We've said that metabolic syndrome is simply a list of risk factors, really kind of the definition. If you get those risk factors under control, if you get your weight under control back to a normal weight and if, you're, uh, if you're, uh, your lipids come under control on your blood work and your blood pressure gets back to uh, within limits, have you reversed the metabolic syndrome? I don't know that you ever truly completely 100% reverse or get the, you know, get taken away from the diagnosis of metabolic syndrome. Yes, it decreases your risk for cardiovascular disease. I think if you're able to do that without drugs, if you're able to do all of that with just lifestyle changes and you're able to maintain that lifestyle and continue with your lowered weight, lowered blood pressure, um, and, and lowered cholesterol levels just with lifestyle factors alone, then I think you do completely reverse, reverse it. But if, you're, if you have to take medications right. for any of that, then, then the risk still is maintained. Very well, doctor. <laughs> Thanks very much for your time. You're welcome.